we have now been through a whole host of trigonometry. And so what I've done is put together a little trigonometry toolkit that is something that I advise you to be very familiar with so that when you walk into an exam or a test, you can use any of these tools at your disposal to answer the questions at hand. So if we have a look at some of the things, well, the first thing we did was we learnt about the trig ratios. So Sokotoa, and this is still true when we are solving a right angled triangles. Then we moved on and we looked at trigonometry when we pull it onto the Cartesian plane and we saw that we can write Sokotoa in terms of x, y and r. And that helps us to solve things like Pythagoras type questions which we are going to look at a bit later in this video. Then we had a look at some special angles and special angles here, there are two ways that you can do them. So you can learn the special angle triangles or you can learn this, what is um, known as the fan method because that actually helps you to answer things like zero and 90 degrees. Okay, so go and have a look at the first video that we did if this is not familiar to you. But the special angles, we need to be thinking about things like zero, 30, 45, 60 and 90 and often now that we know things like double and compound angles, we need to know how to work to create special angles so that we can solve things. Then also on the Cartesian plane, we learned about um, putting things in the relevant quadrants so that we can reduce them all to a first quadrant value. So we had a look first at the cast rule, uh, which is very important. You're gonna see this often, or you're going to need to refer to it often. Um, and you can then add a, an angle to any quadrant as long as you understand where it fits in. So 180 minus, then sine is positive, cos and tan are negative. 180 plus, 360 minus. Remember, if you have negative angles, you want to add 360 to those angles. And if you have extremely large angles, you want to minus 360 because then in that way you travel a full revolution and so you end up actually effectively where you started off. And then just a special note that if we're dealing with 90 plus or 90 minus, those are co-functions. So sine becomes cos and cos becomes sine and you just need to make sure of whether or not that would be positive or negative depending on which quadrant you are working with. Then we have been have quite become quite familiar with these fundamental identities. So this helps us when we need to solve trig identities um, where we notice that tan theta is equal to sine over cos or sine theta over cos theta. So we can substitute that out and then solve. And then the other one, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. So those we need to be very familiar with. These do not appear on any formula sheet. What is going to appear on our formula sheet are these compound and double angles. So compound angles, that's when I add two different values together um, and we all subtract, add or subtract two different values together and we've got those formulae that will be at our disposal on the formula sheet. And then similarly, the double angles formula. Remember, we've got three options for cos and often you'll find that all three options would work, um, but sometimes it does make our lives a little bit easier if we are guided in which one we choose. And then one option here for the sine double angle. So there we have a full trigonometry toolkit at our disposal. Take note that only the compound and double angles are gonna be on our formula sheet, as well as the triangle, the sine, cos, and area rules that we'll look at at a later stage. Okay, but let's dive into some examples today of Pythagoras type questions um, because they are going to use a lot of this information. So we were first introduced to trigonometry at grade 10 level and we would have really seen these kind of questions back then. Okay, so what we need to note is that we'll be given some information about a trig ratio. So sine theta or five sine theta minus three equals zero We'll be given a second bit of information and then here are some um, tips without using a calculator 
or if they say things like make use of a diagram, that's when we know we are dealing with a Pythagoras type question. So you're given some trigonometry, you're given a little bit of extra information. This is actually helping you decide if it's positive or negative. And then they say things like without a calculator or making use of a diagram. Okay, so once we've identified them, they are very easy to solve. So let's put that example to the test. If 3 sine theta minus 2 is equal to 0 and tan theta is less than 0, in other words, what they're actually saying there is that tan theta is negative, then without using a calculator, make use of a diagram, look at those keywords to determine the value of cos theta and then cos 2 theta, now that we're at matric level. Okay, so most students jump straight here and they write down cos theta and then they don't know what to do, which is why I want you to be aware of the little buzz words here that guide us. No calculator and use a diagram. Okay, let's take that trig ratio that we're dealing with and we're going to isolate it. So we're going to say, okay, well, 3 sine theta is equal to two, a positive 2. We're going to take that over. And then sine theta is equal to 2 over 3. Okay, why do I want this? Well, because I know that based on Sokotoa, sine is opposite of over hypotenuse or more relevant to Pythagoras questions, y over r. And that's going to guide me to draw the sketch that they were asking me for. Okay, but now I need to figure out where to sketch this triangle on the Cartesian plane. So the first thing I want you to notice is that we've ended up with a positive fraction there. So using our cast rule, we can say, well, sine is positive in quadrant 2 and quadrant 1. And then we need to use this other information. They told us that tan theta is negative. So tan is negative in the places we don't see the T. So in the, in the S quadrant and the C quadrant. And where we find two ticks, that is where we want to draw our triangle. So we're going to draw a triangle in quadrant two. Doesn't have to be very big. This is just going to help us work out the missing value. Because if you were to look at this question that they want us to solve here, cos theta, what we should know is that cos is x over r. And at the moment, I've just got a y value and an r value. So I need to find out what x is. That's why we do this Pythagoras method. Okay, so we can draw what is known as a terminal arm. We always join down to the x-axis, and then we can substitute in what we know. Okay, the r value would be there, and then we'll have an x and a y value. Okay, so we know that y is equal to 2, and r is equal to 3, based on what we've just done by isolating that sine ratio. Then we can use Pythagoras. So Pythagoras says that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Remember to give him credit because it's his theorem. Okay. And then we can say, well, we don't know what x squared is, but we do know that y is 2 and we do know that r is 3. Okay. So we can then start to solve this. x squared plus 4 equals 9 x squared equals 5 if we minus that 4 and then what we want to do is we want to square root both sides so x is equal to plus or minus the root of 5. Remember whenever I introduce a root I do so with a plus or a minus sign. Okay and then what you do grade 12 is you have a look at your sketch and you say okay well this is an x coordinate is it on the negative side of the axis or on the positive side and in this instance it's going to be negative root of 5 there. And now I'm ready to answer their question. So they wanted cos theta, which is x over r. I can now say, well, then that is equal to minus 5 over 3 as my answer. Right, the next question there, B, is asking for cos 2 theta. So that's a double angle. So I've gone and found those double angle formulae on my formula sheet. And now I can really choose, because I have this triangle, and I have x, y, and r, I really can substitute with any of these three options here. It doesn't matter at all. So let's take the very first one, and we substitute in. So instead of cos 2 theta, now we're going to say, well, that is the same as cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. 
Then we can substitute in. So cos, we've just worked out actually, is minus root of 5 over 3. So we're going to put that in there. Minus the root of 5 over 3 squared. Minus sine, we actually have sine up here. But if we didn't, we could have said y over r. Uh, so that would be 2 over 3 squared. And then we just work that out. So a root times, well, let's start here. A minus times a minus is a plus. Root of 5 times root of 5 is 5 over 3 times 3 is 9. Minus 2 times 2 is 4 over 3 times 3 is 9. So we end up with 5 minus 4 because that's a common denominator there of 9. So 5 minus 4 is 1 over 9 as our final answer. So there we have it, Pythagoras type question. The, the biggest key is to recognize it, and then you'll be able to answer without any hassles. Another way that Pythagoras questions are asked is like this. So they give us cos of 21 degrees equals k. So now it's not the case of trying to figure out where this diagram is going to fit, because we know where 21 degrees goes. It goes in quadrant 1. It equals to k. So what we can do... Um, and oftentimes we can solve these ones without necessarily drawing a sketch. But in general, I find the sketch to be so helpful. So this is the other type of Pythagoras type question is when you get given a trig ratio, they tell you no calculator because I know the temptation is really just to pick up your calculator and type in cos of 21. But they've specifically said no calculator. And so that must sound an alarm bell for us. This is not a special angle. And so therefore, we must be dealing with a Pythagoras type question. So the first thing I like to do is write this um, in fraction form so that I can just understand what my trig ratio is that I'm looking at. So k over 1 there. And that helps me because then I can actually draw my sketch. I draw that terminal arm, um, 90 degrees, the 21 goes there. And I'm dealing with cos, which is x over r. So the x coordinate here is k, and the r value here is 1. And then I can use Pythagoras to work out that y value. So again, Pythagoras said x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Don't forget to give him credit. And then we can substitute. So x squared, that's going to be k, plus y, we don't know yet, squared, is equal to r squared. So r is equal to 1. Okay, then we can work that out. k times k is just k squared, still, plus y squared. 1 times 1 is just 1. And then we try to solve here for y. So let's move that k across. So we end up with y squared is equal to 1 minus k squared. And then remember, we are going to introduce a root. So square root there, plus or minus square root there. So y is equal to plus or minus the root of 1 minus k squared. And then we have a look at what we're dealing with. We're in quadrant 1, and everything is positive in quadrant 1. Our y values are all above the x-axis here, so those are positive. So I can then conclude and say, well, then this coordinate here is 1 minus k squared. And try and get used to seeing that because um, that often gets asked. Okay, so it can be an M or a K or a T. Those are the letters they like to use. Recognize this as a Pythagoras type question. Okay, so first up they're asking for cos of 42. So we've got a couple of options. We can try and say um, maybe we can do a 90 minus or a 180 something to see if it becomes 21. But what I'm hoping that you notice is that 42 is 2 times 21. So cos of 2 times 21. So that then becomes a double angle. Now, at this stage, the world is my oyster. I can once again use any of them because I have already worked out x, y, and r. But if I hadn't gotten to that sketching step yet, then we'd probably be better off choosing the double angle that only has cos in it because I know what cos is. It's k. Cos of 21 is k. So let's expand with that just to be safe. So we're going to say 2 cos squared 21 minus 1. And then we're just going to sub in. So cos of 21 we know is k, and that is squared minus 1. And so we're left with 2k squared minus 1 there as an answer. Okay, then cos of 51. 
This one is a little bit different because if I were to half that cos of 51, I'm not going to end up at my 21. Okay, so again, I try and I have a look. I see 90 minus. Can that maybe give me a 21? But it doesn't. And so then, the without the use of a calculator is also always a hint for me to try special angles. So I can maybe compound this to say 30 degrees is a special angle and 21 degrees I know. And then be very careful, grade 12s. We can't just multiply in there. We need to go find our compound angle formula. So there they are on the formula sheet. And so we've got cos something plus something. So that's the very, uh, the third one there, not the very last one, sorry. So that's going to be cos 30, cos 21, minus sine 30, sine 21. And then we're going to use special angles to solve. Right, so I'm hoping you're starting to see the importance of that trigonometry toolkit and how well you need to know your work because uh, you don't want to waste time here. Okay, so cos of 30 on the 30 degree line, cos is x over r, so root 3 over 2, times by cos of 21, which we know is just k, minus sine of 30, so sine is y over r, 1 over 2, times by sine of 21. So that's where we're going to need our diagram. Can't just read it straight from the question. So sine is y over r. Let's substitute that in there. The y value is that funny root, 1 minus k squared, over our r value there is 1. Okay, so we end up with root 3k over 2 minus 1 minus k squared in a root sign over 2. And then because those are both over 2, you can just combine into one denominator. So root 3k minus the root of 1 minus k squared over 2. Not a very nice answer, but we have used compound angles within this Pythagoras type problem and we managed to get to an answer.